Good evening, I'm John at AccuSlice. I'm doing a short video here to give everybody an update of what's been going on at AccuSlice. What projects we've been working on, what new projects are being planned, and what new products are being introduced by the company. Like many of you, I've been confined to my home for the most part. I occasionally make trips to the office to process some AccuSlice orders, but most of the time I'm spending either my home shop or my garden. My two hobbies are gardening and woodworking. And actually, I, my garden came out very well this year since I had more time to work on it. I harvested quite a few tomatoes. I actually produced about 100 quarts of tomato sauce, probably about uh, 200 uh, green peppers, uh, about 50 pounds of potatoes, and a lot of other crops, including sweet potatoes, cabbage, broccoli, lettuce, spinach. So quite a few products that I produced in the garden this year. In addition, I added a, a strawberry patch to the garden and also a, a sweet potato patch, uh, which will be harvesting more next year. But most of the time I've been spending in the shop working on uh, woodworking projects. Uh, one of the projects I've been working on is actually for my own use. Uh, we needed a new cabinet in the kitchen uh, for storage of, of parts. And I designed this in uh, SketchUp. I always design my projects uh, beforehand because by planning and ske sketching it and drawing it ahead of time, you save a lot of wasted wood and make sure you do it right the first time. But this uh, cabinet is made to match my existing kitchen cabinets and it'll blend right in and give us some additional storage for uh, the, the tools in the kitchen. Other than that, I'm working on AccuSlice products. One of the main projects I developed this summer was the AccuFacet system. The AccuFacet system is an indexing system that mounts on the AccuSled and it's used to produce multi-sided or faceted objects. I can produce six-sided cylinders or eight-sided or twelve-sided cylinders such as this, then I can also make multifaceted pieces such as this. <clears throat> One of the projects I completed with this, I did a series of videos on this, is making some of these faceted desk clocks. And again, these are larger blocks of wood with multifacets. Some of these I use a solid piece of wood, other I, others I use a laminated piece of wood. And actually this is a dizzy bow pattern project which was again faceted. And the front of this clock is actually a piece of figured maple. And this maple actually came to me from a customer. One of our customers, uh, Dan Mitchell, who makes ukuleles, sent me some scrap pieces from making his instruments. And he sent me this piece of figured maple. And from this piece of maple, I actually made this front for this desk clock. And thank you, Dan, for these objects. He sent me quite a few pieces of wood. He also sent me some, here's some burl. And I want to make a knife handle for a large uh, buoy knife that I'm working on. This will make a nice pattern for that knife. Send me some other pieces I can use for making some segmented bowls, which I'll be doing in the near future. So again, thanks, Dan, for those samples. I, I will be using them in future projects. In making these faceted desk clocks, I ran into a problem, and the main problem was sawdust uh, gumming up the uh, wheels on the AccuSlice you know, carriage. The, I went, in cutting these facets, I created a lot of sawdust, and the sawdust crept down underneath the, the sled and uh, started you know, cutting up the uh, roller bearings on the AccuSlice system. And the bearings, when those bearings get clogged with sawdust, you start feeling it very quickly. You start feeling hesitation as you're trying to push the board through the bandsaw blade. And it's important you clean those bearings regularly. If you don't clean them, that sawdust can actually embed into the uh, polycarbonate wheels and actually start to cause the wheels to crack. So it's very important you clean those wheels pretty regular if they get clogged up with sawdust. So with that in mind, I was working on, you know, well, how can I minimize that sawdust buildup on those uh, wheels? You know, what kind of guard can I put in place to eliminate the sawdust from building up into that guard? And what I came up with is this guard here. This guard is made from a piece of like about an inch and a half square tubing. And I put caps on the two ends and I hollowed out sections here that go around the bearings on the AccuSled. This is the AccuSled that we use on our system. And these front bearings are the ones that get clogged up with saw these, sawdust. These bearings are exposed to the closest to the bandsaw blade, and they get crudded up real fast with uh, sawdust. So this guide is meant to surround those bearings so the sawdust can't get in. I actually have one all set up here already. It mounts in the existing holes on the AccuSled, and as you can see here, it completely surrounds those bearings 
the roller bearings on the AccuSled. And you know, probably prevents 95% of the sawdust from getting into the bearings. Uh, some can still creep around a little bit, but it catches most of it. But it saved me a lot of time. I didn't have to clean the bearings near as often uh, using this sled. Uh, this is a brand new product. I made this actually myself in there on the mini mill in my machine shop. And uh, we are offering these on our website. So they're listed on the Accu, um, the Accu sled page on the website. Sawdust clogging the bearings has, has been an issue I've been trying to address in different ways. Uh, this is our typical Accu sled. And one of my first ideas was just a piece of angle iron. Uh, this is a thin piece of aluminum angle iron. I mounted onto the sacrificial fence, screwed it in place, and that probably trapped, you know, 75% of the dust from getting into the roller bearings. So it helped quite a bit. So then I went one step further and I made a, a channel. There's a piece of plastic, surrounds the bearings, and again goes around and protects the bearings. I did even a better job than the angle iron. But when I was producing this next project, which I'll describe a little bit later, uh, these are some star-shaped patterns using the Accu slice system. And so I was using the Accu wedge system on the on the Accu, on the uh, bandsaw. And what I added to this was a, a piece of nylon brush, the entire length of the uh, dust guard. And this actually rides along the table on the bandsaw and keeps the dust from getting underneath this keeps the dust from getting underneath this uh, dust guard and did even a better job I just did a very good job at uh, protecting those bearings from getting sawdust and I'll be doing more studies on this and producing a video on this in the near future and I just finished this today I took one of those you know brushes mounted on me on my uh, carriage and now this is all set to run, you know, for my board. So I'll be testing this in the near future. I said I'll be doing a video on this to uh, determine how well it actually works. I think it's a good idea, and initial testing looks good. And I think it's going to be a nice product uh, to have available uh, in the future. Uh, if you want to do this yourself, you can buy this brush from a master car. It's not that expensive, and uh, you can easily mount this yourself, either right on a sacrificial fence, or in this case, I drilled holes and actually mounted it to my carriage. But it is important, like I said, to make sure your bolt roller bearings stay clean. You don't want those getting clogged up with sawdust. Uh, if they get clogged up with sawdust, they will crack and you will need to replace them. And there is a video on our website describing how to replace the roller bearings on the AccuSlice system. I did a series of four videos using the AccuSlice system to produce the match book in backs and sides for guitars. The first three videos describe how to use the AccuSlice system to produce these match book in backs and sides for the guitars. The fourth video of this series will be useful to anybody who uses the AccuSlice system to slice longer and wider boards on the AccuSlice system. In that video I actually listed a series of 10 tips or steps that can be used to give you better results using the AccuSlice system. Again, that video is useful for anybody, not just luthiers, but anybody using the AccuSlice system for producing wider and longer boards on the AccuSlice system. I'm currently working on a series of three videos on using the AccuSlice system to produce these eight-sided star-shaped patterns on the bandsaw. I got the idea for this project from watching a YouTube video in which somebody was making these trapezoid-shaped pieces on a table saw. And what I saw them doing was quite dangerous. Uh, and I would never even attempt what I saw them doing. They were cutting these small pieces and their fingers were literally, you know, half an inch, three quarters of an inch away from the, from the blade on the table saw. And in one case, somebody was actually using a pencil and an eraser to push the boards through the blade on the table saw. So when I first saw that, I thought, well, can that be done on the bandsaw using the Accu slice or the Accu wedge system? And when I first thought it probably couldn't be done, but then I figured out how to do it. And in this video, I'll be showing how to produce these trapezoid shaped pieces using the Accu wedge system. So in video one, we describe how to cut these pieces on the bandsaw. In the video two, we describe how to glue these together to produce these star-shaped patterns. And in the video three, I'll be producing some of these finished products, such as these coasters, some uh, trivets, and also some uh, segmented bowls.
I also use the system to produce these larger patterns using these same pieces, just expanding out and using different colored woods, different contrasting colored woods to produce these unique shape patterns and make a nice trivet or other project. And using the AccuSlice system, I'm always very conscious of safety in using the system. And in producing these star shaped patterns, I came up with a couple, a couple new ideas. First of all, I was using the um, safety shield that I developed for the AccuFacet system. This uh, shield is included in the AccuFacet system as part of the package. But it can also be used as a standalone package, again, just to get the additional protection from that bandsaw blade. So this is available now as a separate item on our website. In addition, I came up with another item, and it's nothing more than a piece of plexiglass, about an inch and a half wide, eight inches long, and I glued epoxy epoxy and a magnet onto this, and this mounts on the blade guard on front of the bandsaw blade on the Laguna bandsaw. And again, I got the safety shield on the left side of the bandsaw blade, this over top of the bandsaw blade, my board's going through here, so I got a lot of protection to shield that bandsaw blade from your fingers getting even near it. Uh, this works on a Laguna, I'm not sure if it'll work on other bandsaws, but very something very similar could be made for other types of bandsaws. But again, just additional safety, you know, projects that can, you know, make sure that bandsaw is much safer to use. A bandsaw can be a dangerous instrument. It's very easy, you can get hurt with it. And uh, again, I'm, I'm very conscious of that. In fact, the reason I developed the AccuSlice system was again for safety. I was in the process of making some uh, thin uh, veneers for making some furniture, and my hands are really a, a half an inch away from that bandsaw blade. And I knew it had to be, be a better way to do that, and that's why I developed the AccuSlice system to cut thin veneers for making furniture. I also did a series of three videos on the AccuSlot system. The first video describes the AccuSlot system in some detail. In the second video, I produced some of these Celtic ring patterns that actually were six-sided. What I ended up doing here, I actually used the AccuFacet system to produce the six sides, you know, much like this, a six-sided block. Then from the six-sided block, I was able to cut, you know, six Celtic ring patterns. It made a real nice pattern of Celtic rings. This is actually a, this is actually a double Celtic ring pattern on here. Came out really nice. So again, using uh, two systems in conjunction, the AccuFacet system to make a six-sided block, and then using the AccuSlot system to produce the Celtic ring patterns. I produced three other videos that might be useful to you in your various projects. The first was a video on the glue jig system to describe how it's assembled and put together. And again, this is mainly to give you ideas in case you want to make your own you know, glue jig type system for gluing up uh, laminate boards for making dizzy bowl projects or making laminated strips for other projects. <clears throat> the next video is a video on bandsaw blade selection. In producing, you know, various projects using the AccuSlice system or the AccuWedge, the question often arises, what bandsaw blade should I use? In that video, the system describes in some detail, you know, this, what bandsaw blade work best for different applications. The third video I developed was a video on the AccuPass system. The AccuPass system was actually developed originally for use with the Accu uh, slot system for producing Celtic ring patterns. You know, I wanted to create a uh, system where I could, you know, accurately position where that bandsaw blade was going to cut to make some of these X-shaped patterns. So it was originally developed for that system, and I use it all the time when I'm using the Accu uh, slot system. But I also use it when I'm using the, the AccuFacet system and the AccuWedge system, because it's a great tool to show you exactly where that bandsaw blade is going to cut. And even more than that, it's a safety device to show you to make sure your hands don't get in the path of that bandsaw blade. Recently, I just developed some new clamps for the Dizzy Glue Up Jig. This is the jig which is used to produce your um, Dizzy Bowl pattern projects where you can put your disc in here and rotate it and get the correct angle. And this was designed for real smaller pieces. Works out quite nicely. But then I was working on some projects like this, which is much larger. So I needed a bigger system. So I came up with this new jig. It's the same basic uh, jig, but it uses larger uh, clamps. These clamps, the clamps on the old system are quarter inch diameter by about an inch and a half tall. These are 5 16th inch diameter by three inches tall. And again, it's just for gluing up larger, you know, dizzy bowl pattern projects. It's larger and stronger. And we also have the uh, sleeves for these same uh, clamps. So again, it's a new product. It is available on our website. We have one new product which will be coming shortly. It's called the AccuSled 2. It's an AccuSled very similar to these AccuSleds, but it'd be 4 inches wide by 30 inches long. And it's designed for cutting longer boards. 
and I'll be showing a number of applications of that uh, for you know, some guitar projects and some other projects where you can use a longer sled. Uh, that'll be available in about three to four weeks. I'm always adding new tools and new, new things to my shop. My latest addition is this microscope system. I just bought this about uh, a month ago. I'm a, I've been a scientist by training and I have a lot of experience using microscopes. And most of the mic microscopes I use in the past are, you know, Nikon microscopes that cost thousands of dollars. And I found this microscope on uh, Amazon and it's about $600. It's called an Amscope microscope. The objects are pretty good and for my use it's a great tool uh, for here in my shop. So I've used this quite a bit, you know, for producing some of these, you know, fine deal, detail projects where I'm looking for very accurate, uh, you know, piecing of uh, pieces together. So that'll be quite helpful uh, as I go forward. I'm also planning to work on another project this, this winter, and that'll be a, a guitar. I made my first guitar about 50 years ago when I was in college. <clears throat> I had a roommate who played a folk guitar, so I wanted to learn how to play the guitar, so I couldn't afford to buy one, so I made one. And that was more than 50 years ago. Uh, now I want to make a new one, uh, learning some of the new techniques using the AccuSlice system to produce the panels and some other tools that I can use with the AccuSlice system. So that's one of my projects planned for the winter. Once again, I want to thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions or concerns, please give us a call or drop us an email. We're happy to always talk with you for ideas on your projects, new ideas that you can use to improve what you're doing, and new applications for the AccuSlice system. And once again, thank you for watching this video.